Wow. <laughs> I love to read. Yeah, I love to read too. Okay, of course, <laughs> guys. Yeah. <laughs> you are, you. Are, if I take, yeah, do you remember like your first jewelry set that you got for yourself? Jewelry item that you got for yourself? For myself, or what yeah. was given to me? Or either way, yeah. Given what to was me. given to me was very special. It was my great grandmother's. You know what that's called a sapphira. So I mean, it was a bigger necklace that my grandfather gave, uh, made a small little thing for me and gave it to me when I uh, turned 12. And I had just gone to boarding school and so that was my little gift and it's still very, very special. And yeah, it's an old Hyderabadi piece, it's very beautiful. Lovely. Manisha ma'am, are you a big jewellery person? Do you, do you? I am. <laughs> so, uh, Can I take you back and ask you the same question, which was the first, do you remember your first jewellery item? Uh, the first jewellery, um, I've never been actually a jewellery person. I love jewellery, uh, uh, of course, I think every woman or every girl loves it, or also for men. Um, um, but uh, personally, I don't really wear jewelry. Yeah. Okay. So actually, uh, you are like. I'm not qualified to answer this question. <laughs> not a jewelry person at all. I only wear jewelry when my stylist makes me wear it. Okay. That's it. <laughs> wow. Okay. And that, do you do you remember what you owned first? Someone gave you or you bought? Nobody gave me anything. <laughs> <laughs> I buy my own jewelry. <laughs> yeah. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I'm not a jewelry person. Okay. The only diamond I have in my life is my daughter. So sweet. Of course. The most precious. Big hand to that guy. Yeah. Yeah. Richa, how big, out of 10, Chalo, how big a jewelry person are you? I feel like you've got like 2 out of 5. Yeah, for the included, yeah. God forbid the sponsors. Guys, you person. think we wore enough jewelry for a lifetime in Hiramandi? That's why yes. we're just saying. No jewelry. <laughs> Yeah, I used to joke that if I just, uh, from my puja sequences, I just jog out of the set and take a rickshaw and leave, I can make an indie film, yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, my first piece of uh, jewelry got gifted to me when I turned 18. It was my late grandmother's diamond earrings and uh, I still have them and I still wear them and that's what it. I don't think anybody wears a ton of jewelry in their daily lives. Or if they get a show, they get a show and they get a show. Taas and Spardin answered, you have to answer this as well. Thanks, Spardin. I wouldn't say I'm a... I prefer to wear, let's say, I call it accessories. Right? So 100%, I love accessories. I think it... Right now, you know, women wearing jewelry or men wearing jewelry, the lines have been blurred. You know, we're all, what do you call it? Um, what do you call that? Uh, we're all mm, metrosexual, mm -hmm. right? And um, I believe that if jewelry enhances and gives you some kind of confidence or, right now I, I wear a few things which uh, is meant for luck. Okay. So I believe my, my mom has made me wear something which I would not like to mention, but she's given me a ring, she's given me a, a little necklace for, you know, like an evil eye, you know, to protect you from what they call Nazar. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I, I stick to that, but very basic. It's working. I hope so. I hope so, man. Right. Uh, I just wish to say, I just binge watched the series myself, and after seeing some of my scenes with all the diamond earrings and, you know, the rings and all of that, man, I'm actually now considering getting myself some diamond earrings. Oh, right. So that's, that's, that's the effect, this, this being part of, you know, like I said, that for a second. <laughs> <laughs> right. I know, here's a call. Um, my, my one question to all of you is about your one-on-one -on -one experience with Mr. Bansali. Mr. Bansali, if you're watching this interview, I would love to do an interview with you. I've not got a chance yet. But for the, your one-on-one -on -one interaction, what is it like? You know, he... Firstly, he communicates purely, mostly on the level of, of what he's doing, which is his, his films. And films just... It's, it's, not, it's not a job for him, it's his life. I, I can't imagine him doing anything else besides making movies. And, uh, you know, every once in a while you meet people, you know, who are masters in what they do. And he is one such person. You know, it's not often that you meet true, true masters. And, you know, you just surrender to them and you learn from them. 
and you just watch them work and, and you try and imbibe some of their energy and you try and think about all the spirits they've allowed to possess themselves doing their work. And it's amazing to watch him work, you know, it's like he's, he's got this team of 20, 25 ADs and, you know, who are all learning, who are all on their journey, so in some ways he's also got a school going on on set. I mean, besides his actors and all of us who work there. So it's, it's, it's a true, true experience and he's very passionate, he knows what he wants at the same time as, as Richard said. You know, if he strikes a court, uh, uh, an equation with you, he, he'll ask you to, to he'll invite you into his process and, you know, he'll, he'll listen to you and that, that's how it should be. And uh, I've, I've never had the chance to work with uh, such an engrossed and passionate filmmaker. And uh, I haven't had many conversations with him besides the movies, but uh, besides pets and giving up smoking and, and uh, mothers, but that's... Besides that, it's just been, just been, just been, uh, what? Nice. Gave up smoking? Who, me? Yeah. Yes. Well, yeah. he, he, he wanted to give up smoking, so, okay. so we had a chat about it. Okay. <laughs> right. Um, Arati, you know, just as the one-on-one -on -one with him, what is he like? Like, you know, um, do you remember, do you recall anything while shooting a particular scene or something that stays with you? Um, this could be a thesis, so I'll try and keep it short. I really love uh, Sanjay, sir. Um, and I sort of had an equation with him even before I worked with him in Padmavad. Uh, for some reason, he uh, was fond of me. So I uh, just really enjoyed being around him. Um, he's a legendary filmmaker, but I also love him as a person. Like, I, I find him very, like, what he feels, he says. And uh, I think some of the greatest teachers are like that. And I've, I've grown up around a teacher. I've been learning dance since I was five years old. So, I know what, like, I feel that kind of almost, a kind of, I don't know what to call it, but like a Gunshishya way of working. Mm -hmm. I find that, I find that very immersive, very rare, uh, and I find that very true mm -hmm. to what it is that he's doing and what he expects from us, and he's hardest on himself. Yeah. And that childlike quality in him is something that I find very, very beautiful and also very inspiring that he keeps that going, whatever it is that he's doing. Vishwam, you already spoke about him, uh, but tell us, is, was this time, you know, this time, did you observe something during a scene? Could you tell us an incident or something that you remember that stays with you? No, I'm just going to say a few things about Sanjay. You know that uh, I got to know him during 1942, a love story. And he was writing and he was assisting Vinod. And then he got this script of Khamoshi and directed me. So over the years, what I've noticed about him is that, you know, he's like this, have you seen cinema parodies so? though? It's about a little child who grows up fantasizing about, you know, and he's, so I think Sanjay has grown up. It is in his genes, it is in his soul to kind of make brilliant film. You know, his, he aspires to grow and just make more and more better films. And he's born for that. And uh, what I see of him is he that he lives only in his sets. I mean, I think he just goes home to sleep <laughs> and to make sure his mom is okay and everything's okay. But he he is his being is in the set and he's constantly creating, constantly trying to improve himself. He's the most hardworking person I know. And, and even after pack up, he goes home and he's right, he's the first one on the set and he's constantly at it. So he he gets rattled up when other people don't match up to his level of dedication. And probably we all have lives, other lives to do and other things to do. He doesn't. It's his sole focus is his what work is. The other thing I noticed about him, he's the kindest soul because in our set in Hiramandi, I have done so many movies, I've not seen that. Of course, the younger generation is a lot more evolved and a lot more better and kinder, I feel. But on that set, we had these 30, 40 dogs. And, and, and they all looked after so well. You know, every, every each one was, and I just found that only a kind soul will be so considerate. Normally, you know, people don't care. And, and they get irritated if some, some animal crosses the path or some, something, but no. In Hiramani said, they all were like really looked after well. 
and we talked at a name. Yeah. He was lame, he was taken care of. He used to walk into the frames and then Sir's eyes used to light up when the, the, the dog the, used to There was a dog, he named her Janu. So every time Janu would come out like Janu. <laughs> <laughs> and you see like a different side of the ball. It's really cute. And there would be times with the dog when they would be sitting on chairs and <laughs> yeah, like chair kinds. And also we had people looking after them. So it was so nice to see that aspect as well as the creative, you know, his, his drive, his hunger, right. you know, to do, to excel in his art. Nice. So, yeah, I think I can go on, but this is what I saw. That's <laughs> love about, about, about dogs. I'd just like to add the, the AD team, whenever things didn't work out well on set and Mr. Bansali got, you know, upset or frustrated and the ADs were going to be getting his wrath. <laughs> they used to send all the dogs on to send at least four or five of them because that would just calm him down immediately and then, and then you know, it would make him reset 10 minutes and then of course they'll continue with the days. So. If, if he happens to see this interview, those poor guys are not going to be able to use this trick ever again. Bharti, what have you done? That is a great story. Lovely. Whoever would like to be a dog on Pansali said, raise your hand. <laughs> right. Um, Even the real heroes. <laughs> yeah, the real heroes. Absolutely. They cannot fly on the wall. Dog on the side, this is. Uh, so actually, with you also, any incident that you remember that will always stay with you, which is a teaching. Uh, you know, just watching him, you learn so much. He is absolutely an institution in, in himself. I think uh, everyone says it, but like it might sound cliche, I'm just repeating it, but it's true. And that's the only